Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 24th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany and again teaching virtually in London, England. One problem that hackers have to overcome is network detection tools, in particular the ones like Zeek, for example, that do correlate multiple events. So one trick that attackers have been playing with is to move part of the activity out of band, meaning away from the network that's typically monitored. We got a real nice example thanks to a reader of such an attempt that involved part email, part web, but also SMS. In this case, the attacker actually asked the victim to send a text message to a particular phone number. In response, the victim received a shortened URL. Once clicked on the URL, the user was then redirected uh, to a phishing website. Pretty interesting scheme, also fairly well done with the use of custom domains targeting the particular organization. Also, the SMS messages contained the name of the organization, kind of trying it to me be more plausible that this is an actual attempt to, for example, reset a password or like in this case, upgrade an email account. Maybe in part, what attackers are also a little bit counting on here that often you sort of have these uh, interplays between email, SMS messages, often used for authentication. Maybe they're hoping some more user acceptance from this trick as well. And often as you are plugging new devices into a Windows system, drivers are downloaded and installed automatically. And apparently that's a problem with Razer mice. These mice will, as many peripherals, download and install drivers, but these drivers are exposing a system to a trivial privilege escalation. The vulnerability was disclosed on Twitter by John Hatton. Apparently they did try to contact Razer, but didn't receive any kind of a response until after they disclosed the vulnerability via their tweet. And a patch is apparently in the works. And remember last week I mentioned a vulnerability in the Realtek uh, SDK. Realtek of course makes network chips for numerous, uh, in particular IoT devices, and the SDK did lead to insecure software being deployed with uh, these uh, devices. Well, it turns out that the Mirai botnet has now added some uh, exploits that specifically target this Realtek uh, vulnerabilities. At least the SAM, a uh, network security company, uh, did post uh, some samples of versions of the Mirai botnet that that it says do specifically exploit some of these vulnerabilities. The exploits being used here are exclusively targeting the web server component. So typically in order to be vulnerable, you would have to have the web server exposed, typically of course being used for admin purposes and should not really be exposed to the internet. But given the large number of devices out there that are using this chipset that are potentially vulnerable because of these SDK flaws, Please keep watching out for updates if possible, but some of these updates sadly may eventually come from a vendor and not be well advertised. Well, if you're putting your data in the cloud, then you better make sure that you implement some form of decent authorization for access to that data. That of course, also applies uh, to applications that you're using in the cloud that then access uh, data. One platform uh, to do this with easily is Microsoft's uh, Power Apps and turns out that by default permissions aren't really all what they should be. Now, Microsoft, when you are developing applications using Power Apps has a warning identifying the problem and asking you to fix it. But of course, it's all too easy to click through this and security company 
UpGuard uh, took a look at some power apps and found numerous exposed applications exposing millions of records. So if you have someone in particular non-technical deploying power app uh, applications and that's really sort of the audience that they're going after, maybe double check that uh, permissions on tables and such are implemented correctly. And finally, lots of talk, lots of uh, press about Exchange being attacked uh, with uh, the proxy shell exploit. Well, um, really at this point, every Exchange server has probably been exploited multiple times. If you haven't patched yet, don't bother, just uh, move on. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.